friends in today's video we are going to talk about lawsuit against the seventh day adventist church and we will also be talking about pastor seven boss rejection in one of the conferences in the united states if it sounds like something you might be interested in do keep watching and don't go anywhere there is a report of the sda church conspiring with eddie alexander to scam some 62,000 haitian americans but how could the church get involved into something like this eddie alexander is a seventh day adventist who is also the ceo of e mini fx a firm that deals in digital asset investments. Eddie promised his investors 5% returns on their investment. It sounds good, right? So people who invested at least $2,000 could make lots of money in a short period of time, say three years. So because of the promising returns on investment, so many Adventists and non-Adventists invested their monies at E-mini FX with the expectation of making lots of money. However, it turned out to be the opposite, that is, their 5% plus their principal investment all gone. So this is the dashboard of an investor. You will definitely see your money growing, but redrawing your money becomes the problem. This is serious bro, but I don't understand why people love get-rich-quick schemes so much that they get themselves into it and eventually lose their hard-earned money. According to this report, an Adventist church board member in New York invested as much as $80,000. Woo! This is money. And what do you do for a living? I'm a resident doctor. And how much do you make? Uh, $60,000. Straight up, man, I make 54 baby. you in the range of 55 60 k now, some SDA pastors were also involved in this scheme. According to this report, close to 100 SDA churches and individual pastors from Colorado, Florida, New York, New Jersey, Ohio, Texas, and many more states in the US were actively involved and invested heavily in this scheme with the hope of killing an elephant. The lawsuit also named Eddie's wife, who is the chief financial officer of E-mini FX and the Florida Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Now, the whole thing started with Eddie and his E-mini FX, but why is the church also being sued? The church is being sued as co-conspirator, that is, conspiring with Eddie in his fraudulent activity. Now, this is probably because of the church's high engagement in this scheme and some of its pastors even influencing other members and other people to also invest their money. I think some SDA pastors, SDA churches, and SDA elders should be very careful about how they run after money. Some pastors love money to the core. And you will see this when you visit the local churches or local districts. Some pastors are so close to the members of the church that have money than they are to the members of the church that do not have anything. 1 Timothy 6 verse 9 says, Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. So I think this verse is talking about people who love money so much and that they want to get rich overnight. Now, most of the statistics on multi-level marketing, cryptocurrency investment, pyramid schemes and others show that majority of people who invested in these schemes lost their money. Some of these reports are available on the internet and it's not hard to find at all. So in a nutshell, if these lawyers win the case against the Seventh-day Adventist Church, what it means is that the Seventh-day Adventist Church will be paying some millions of dollars to those affected. But where is the church going to get the money? Probably from your tithe money or your donation money. Alright, let's move on to our next story. The Roanoke SDA Church in Virginia invited Pastor Stephen Burr to deliver a seminar on end-time events or on prophecy. This seminar is set to begin on 5th May 2023. However, the Potomac Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church has asked the Roanoke SDA Church to reconsider its invitation to Pastor Stephen Burr. So the Roanoke SDA Church wanted to find out why the conference is saying the church should reconsider its invitation to Pastor Stephen Burr. And according to Fulcrum and Adventist Today's post, the reason centers around Pastor Stephen Ball's position on women's ordination. Secrets Unsealed is a supporting ministry of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. 
and we feel like we need to do all in our power to uphold the decisions that have made by, been made by the world church, by the Seventh-day Adventist world church. Twice the world church decided in 1990 and 1995 not to approve the ordination of women to pastoral ministry or pastoral leadership. And uh, so at Secrets Unsealed we believe that we should do everything in our power to uphold the decisions that have been made by the world church. Secondly, we believe that the issues that were discussed at the Theology of Ordination Study Committee should become public knowledge. We rather doubt that very many people out there are going to sit in the pews and read the voluminous and technical theological treatises that were presented at Tusk. This would take hours and hours of arduous and difficult reading. So what we've decided is to present what was given at Tusk in a simple and easy to understand way so that everyone who is watching is able to understand the presentations that were made at the Theology of Ordination Study Committee. In the third place, it has been virtually impossible for us to gain a communication outlet where we can share our strongly held view that although we support women in ministry, at the same time we are opposed to the ordination of women to pastoral leadership. The channels of communication of the denomination, especially in North America, have been used to support only one side of the issue and are closed to any other view. And so this has made it necessary for several supporting ministries of the church, such as Secrets Unsealed, to use their means of communication to share the other side of the equation. Thus, he opposes women's ordination and it appears that the Potomac Conference supports women's ordination. And according to Fulcrum's post, the Potomac Conference has ordained some women in the church. Another reason why the conference asked the church to reconsider its invitation is that the same Pastor Seven Ball believes and teaches last generation theology. Last generation theology teaches that before Jesus returns, there will be a last generation of believers that has reached perfection and will thereby vindicate God's character. These believers will show to the universe that after all, God's law can be kept and Satan will be wrong in claiming that God's law are unbearable. So because of this and others, the conference asked the church to reconsider its invitation to Pastor Stephen Bohr. But the Roanoke SDA Church seems not to be in agreement with the conference decision and still holding on to their invitation to Pastor Stephen Bohr. And we are waiting to see whether Pastor Stephen Bohr will come or not. And anything that comes, we are going to give you an update. If you are watching this video from Roanoke SDA, please let me know in the comment section. Alright, this is all that I had for you today and if you want to receive more stories of things that are happening in and outside of the church, consider subscribing to this channel so you don't miss any video we publish. Alright, thanks for watching. My name is Lawrence and see you next time.